And the universe really didn't want you to get this video. Yeah, that really happened. So this DDM update was supposed to get to you over a month ago, but for reasons I'll get into later, that didn't happen. So the footage you're about to see was recorded in late December and maybe the first two days of January. This dev blog is going to cover the state of the game then, along with my sprint plan going forward. I'll have another update video really soon because, well, a lot of things went really wrong last month. DDM progress was not one of them. So while watching this video, please keep in mind that the data I'm using is four very similar looking chunks. It's the same map that's been copied into four places in memory and then edited and altered in several ways that I'll get into. That was just to allow me to write the code and get it working. In the next update, I'll have an updated map that'll be a lot more interesting. So today we're going to take a look at the state of the game, what I'm doing as far as the plans going forward for my sprints. I have an idea that I really want to do in the dungeons, but I'm not going to be able to decide if I can do that until the rest of the game is done and I see, do I have the memory left to fit it in? That's one of the limitations of working with a 64K computer. So as I work on the code, one of the things I've been doing is like rewriting. Back in the day, I was taught to program by designing your program, flowcharting everything, getting it all figured out, then writing down like this is my program and then take that and break it down into pieces and then break that down into pieces and continue breaking it down into smaller pieces until what you have is code. And that's a process known as waterfall. Uh, you know, we now know that waterfall is not a great idea. It's kind of like jumping off a waterfall on your own because requirements change. I mean, you never know at the beginning exactly what you're going to want to have at the end. Now, in modern code, I was taught a system called Agile. And one of the tenets of Agile is that you get the minimum viable code and you get it working and then you add pieces to it. And at the end of each section of working on it, that's a sprint, you get the code into good working order before you go add the next piece. It makes it more flexible. You can make changes over time because, you know, nothing this big ever doesn't change. Um, I have, like I said before, I've got huge ideas that I want to implement. It's just a matter of will they fit or won't they? So all of these little pieces are broken out. It makes it a lot easier for me to debug and I can move around and I'm trying to move up, but I can't because the river's in the way. So I have fully implemented walkability. You can't walk in places. If I go over here to the dungeon, I can no longer get to it because the mountains aren't walkable and neither is the river. So I've moved the dungeon. It's over here. Uh, I expected when I released that video last June, I expected the dungeon code to be hard and the surface code to be easy. Because what I had from back in the day, the dungeon code was complex and the surface code was very simple. But the problem is, is that for the surface code now, I need the ability to impose monsters and stuff onto the surface. But more importantly, I need it to fit in RAM, but still be reasonably large. So I've done the whole chunk based system, 32 by 32 uh, tile chunks will fit up to four chunks into 4K of memory and then it only leaves 32 by 32 byte sections to load at a time so it's not long disks access. At most it should never need to load more than two of those at a time. Um, now, example of the kind of bugs I've been dealing with and just one of the reasons I'm refactoring is like if I move down from here, I should end up in the bottom right corner of that city but I end up in the bottom left. And what's happening here is you can see there's a chunk down here. It looks funky, but that's actually his design. That's just a different piece of map. The, the entire screen is out of one chunk. And it, so it's basically drawing from here in rows all the way up to the top. When I go down here, now this is the code that was drawing the whole map before because that starts in the bottom right and this is the bottom right. And then this is another piece of code that is drawing the map uh, for this uh, the upper quadrant, um, or in this case, an upper half. But if I continue to move, I can't move on the lake or on the river, so I gotta go over 
and go down here. Now this looks like the same chunk, but you'll notice there's no ford in the river. So go in here, not going in the dungeon because it's a different map. So just ignore the fact that it looks similar. Um, it is indeed different. And as I go over here, this is another section. So one of the things I've done here is I've taken these maps, not this one, but these other ones, and I've done a loop of road all the way around the edge of the map so I can see exactly where it is. So like right here, between this chunk, this is the edge of this chunk, and this is the edge of the other one. And if I'm not sure about that, I've made a debug mode. And you can see, it actually even has my first changing text on the screen. So I am starting in on the next sprint, which is going to involve text and a lot of other things. But you can see now they are colored differently so that I can see exactly what's which chunk. And as you know, obviously this one is off by one. Um, I didn't fix that bug just because while I knew I could fix it, the fix wouldn't be clean and I wanted to re recode it. So another interesting thing is like, can't go down on the mountains, but if I'm in debug mode, I can go wherever I want. So that's kind of where the map is. I know it uh, doesn't look like as big a deal, but now it will handle an eight by eight chunk grid, which is 64 total chunks. And those 64 chunk chunks give you a map that is 256 by 256 tiles. So a nice good size map. So now let's talk a little bit about the sprints going forward. Now, I admit it, I should have started with, instead of the map sprint being my first sprint, I talked about that in the first video, my first sprint, it should have been getting back up to speed with 6502 assembly language, the Commodore memory map, and the Commodore architecture. That should have been where I started out, but I've spent a ton of time doing that. I have read a bunch of books. Um, it's been an adventure and it's been a lot of fun. I was just, yeah, you know, it was hubris thinking I could just pick up with something that I did 30 years ago and do it just as well as I did then. Well, that's bad enough, but not only do I need to get back up to speed, I then need to advance my craft to be better at it. And I've been working hard on that. So, after the map sprint, which I've been calling the sexy sprint because it gives us this beautiful, beautiful map. Well, next comes what I'm calling the not so sexy sprint. That includes things like text handling, text needs to be scrolled, put in the right spots on the screen. I also am going to need disk access for loading and saving, especially loading and saving the chunks on the surface map. Until I get that in, I'm stuck with the four that I have in memory. I'm going to need menus for like start game, save game, that kind of thing, which entails some new screens, also a character screen. And finally, the not so sexy part of the sprint is the random number generator, because without RNGs, we don't have anything. Now, once that done, the next sprint is going to be for characters. And I'm going to add in the player characters, character generation, and all of the things that are involved in displaying the character on the screen and looking at their stats. Uh, once that's in, and that'll probably take a little bit of time, but once it's in, yeah, they won't have anything to fight with. So they really won't do much more than move around the screen. There's not going to be much for them to do. So the sprint after that is going to be mobs, mobile objects. We'll be adding enemies, NPCs, vendors, and then probably followers. I'm leaning towards in the game, you start as a single character. And then as you go through, there will be characters for you to meet and interact with and get to join you. So you'll start with one character. It keeps the game easier for new people learning. It makes character creation not so crazy overwhelming. And I think having those characters that are part of the world really adds to the ability to do storytelling. So once I have enemies and I have all of that, I need to add in items because without, a, you know, what's a game like this without items? And then the other thing I'm going to have to have is, you know, combat. And I think combat's going to be a whole nother thing. I think it's going to be a whole little mini game in and of itself to create. Um, I'm looking forward to it, but I can't do it until we have enemies and we have characters. Well, once we're at that point, we have all the pieces to make a game. But much like my little Unity roguelike, all the pieces does not make a game. So then it's all the content. I need to make all the maps, the dungeons, the cities, 
the characters, the monsters, the items, all of the pieces that make the game need to be put together. And then also put together the story and the way the story goes. I've got a lot of that worked out and I have a friend who is a professional author who's helping me with the writing, which is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to work with her. Finally, after the game is a game, there's the last sprint. And a lot of people think of this one as an afterthought, but for me, this is the most important one and it will be done when it's done. Um, at that point, the game for people who are, who are getting it in alpha will have uh, access, I think. But you gotta find the fun and you gotta find the bugs. So getting the bugs out of it, getting the fun into it, once that's done, we have a game and we can release it. After that, then we see how it's responded to, we see how people enjoy it, and then I'll consider possibly porting it to other platforms. I've had people ask about that already. You know, we import it to this, we import it to that. I don't know. Um, let's let's get a game working first, and then we'll look at uh, porting it. Uh, porting it to other systems that are 6502 based, though, should be uh, doable, I would think. So that's the sprint plan. really didn't want you to get this video. You're not going to believe what all happened. What a week. <sighs> yep, just as I was about finished with this video, the power went out due to a major and unexpected pair of ice storms. The power came back on just a couple of hours before we needed to head to the airport for a two-week vacation. I'll fill you in in my next video about the mayhem and chaos that ensued because it was crazy. But like I said, one of the things that went really well during that vacation was progress on DDM. So the next video is going to be awesome. I hope you like this video. As soon as it's ready, I'll put the new one right here. In the meantime, here's something else you might like. Thanks for coming.